ready to be a warrior? Orla, what have you done? Taking a Roman prisoner. All on my own. See? Told you I could do it. You're just gonna have to take him back. What? I thought you'd be pleased. You can't keep a prisoner. It's hard work. You have to feed it. You have to exercise it. Who's gonna clean up after him? I am here, you know. He's my prisoner. I found him and I want to keep him. Okay, fine. He'll get bored soon enough and then someone will have to get rid of him. There's no pleasing some people. <laughs> and that was a clip from Horrible Histories, and I'm pretty excited to welcome the one and only Nick Frost. How you doing? Hey, what an amazing clip. <laughs> it was superb, wasn't it? What a great clip. That's just <laughs> Perfect you know, radio. a fraction of what you'll see if you go on the 26th. Literally, yeah, fraction. Uh, and you'll actually see it, there'll be visuals if you go. Yeah, you'll see the whole thing. Yeah, you can actually watch it, which is, you know, radio's not perfect for a medium like cinema. But yeah. It, it, you know, it's nice to tantalise. <laughs> I'm a Horrible Histories enthusiast. Right. The, the series I was a huge fan of, but for, for those who are uninitiated, yeah. can you set up... Myself. <laughs> <laughs> can you set up the story for us on where your character fits in? Yeah, I play Argus, who's the leader of a Celtic tribe, which was a thrill for me. They put like a big red wig on me and... A sack. A, th- a sack. That was my own sack. <laughs> own sack, own beard. <laughs> which is what it says under my spotlight picture. <laughs> yeah, and I play the, the father of Amelia Jones's character, who, I don't know why she does it, but she captures a Roman soldier, and then we get into all manner of scrapes trying to get him back. And I think being a dad, what appealed to me about the story is, be it in Celtic Britain or now or future world, parents will always give their kids a hard time. Yeah, especially when they, they want to fly the... Coop, yes. you know, which uh, Amelia's character does not yeah. she wants to be a warrior. Yeah, I mean, flying the coop as well doesn't mean getting your own phone uh, or, you know... Or for her, her own sword. It, yeah, it means <laughs> getting a sword and potentially using it on a poor Roman, you know. The stakes are a lot higher, but yeah. like in classic horrible histories, they spin it slightly and they make it more palatable and I don't think the kids want to see hands cut off and <laughs> human suffering. My kids, Maybe they do. My kids got me into the series so uh, probably about five years ago yeah my kids are 10 and 14 now though still both huge fans so i've seen a lot of episodes and there's sort of british comedy royalties peppered throughout yeah i don't remember you ever making a cameo so how, how did you get involved in this uh they just approached me and said we'd love you to do it and having a kid you got a son right yeah i've got two so- sons i've got an eight-year-old and a seven-month-old Oh, right. He's, he's not as much into it. <laughs> yeah. Why did I have more kids? <laughs> what an idiot. It's tiring. Yeah, I'm almost 50. It was a really big mistake. <laughs> uh, That's on record now for him to, <laughs> to grow up with. Let's have a look at it. Uh, yeah, look, I mean, I don't think there's, there's much I've made that my kids can, <laughs> yeah, can see, which don't have swearing in or daddy having sex with a, another woman that isn't mummy <laughs> or a, a beheading or... So it was, you know, that chance to think, oh, we're, we can we can go and watch this at the cinema, all of us, which would be kind of nice. Because you voiced a lot of kids' films. Yeah, I did lots of Asterix and Tintin, Obelix and Ice Tintin. Age. Yeah. Box yeah. Trolls, Box my tro- favourite. Yeah, I think they can probably see Box Trolls. Hmm. I think they have seen those, but it's nice to do something because the script is good and the other people in it are fun and, and your kids can can be proud of your output. Yeah. As I actually got offered a day on Horrible Histories and I was shooting something else and my kids are still angry at me now. Yeah. I was like, no, but it's like a, it's a six-part drama and they were like, that nobody cares about. Yeah. It's Horrible Histories. Kids, um, you know, my eight-year-old, they're very unbothered by everything. Yeah. You know, I took my son on to set when we shot Snow White a few years ago. And, like, it was me and Chris Hemsworth and there were 200 amazing horses and just didn't give it <laughs> really. <laughs> I was like, what do you need? Like, there's a place near us where we live called Kempton and it's like an old Victorian pumping station used to pump water up in like 1901 and these en- the engines are like a hundred foot high on sunday they put steam through them so you can see them moving couldn't care less <laughs> i took him along i was like look at, it, look at this it's incredible couldn't care less brilliant wanted a bit of carrot cake <laughs> you you're a great writer as well and now that you've taken this plunge into appearing in a, a kids thing rather than just voicing it any ambitions to write create content for children 
younger audience? I don't know. I mean, it would have to be something I really like. I mean, I wrote a... It's called The Homesick Swedish Mice, and it's, it's... I wanted to make it as a graphic novel, and so I thought the best way to do that was perhaps to write it as a screenplay. So then we could just... If we found the right artist, mm. we could use the screenplay yeah, yeah. as storyboards, essentially. And So it's it's been through kind of different phases, so at the moment it's potentially going to be a film, an animated film. But again, you know, we've got our own company now, so putting that through the company is is good and doable but it means it's going to be five years you know it's going to be a long process so we'll see but it was a way of trying to deal i think we're terrible at dealing with death here in the west it always comes as such a shock and a surprise to us that people we love die so by using mice (laughs) i kind of wanted to to show that it was all right yeah and and, your head on with rodents uh, yeah it's all right to be sad and to grieve but that's how it's going to be one of the things i loved about the horrible history series was it never dumbed down the comedy or it it didn't mind being gory either for a a, a young audience was that a conscious keeping that tradition going on the movie yeah i mean i I know you know they're different iterations of the same thing but that's what people liked (laughs) you know and it seems a shame to change that to risk it potentially not being the thing that everyone liked you know Mm. kids are terrible for wanting to watch the worst you know if we're flicking through the menu page on netflix or sky it's like can we watch that can we watch that it's like no you're not watching cannibal holocaust Mm. that's a 15. (laughs) (laughs) my kids showed me a clip on youtube yesterday a couple had found an injured squirrel and nursed it back to health and they push it up a tree right. to let it back into the wild and their cat just jumps up oh, and yeah. loved it. I loved it. I remember, what were we shooting? Shaun of the Dead. And Simon Pegg and I had found a baby bird at the base of a tree and he and I got into a really heated argument and people like gathered around to, to watch us. We were really shouting at one another. <laughs> I thought we should perhaps put it out of its misery. He suggested scaling the tree and putting it back in the nest. And we really went at it for about five minutes. And then at the zenith of the argument, a massive magpie swooped down and ate it. And then we were like, all right, well, let's go back to work then. God's made a decision. The universe (laughs) universe has decided. We were both right in a way. Yeah. (laughs) Tell us a bit about the the two young leads, Amelia Jones and Sebastian Croft. Look, I'm in that position now where I can play people's dads. (laughs) <laughs> and I never realised, I never still feel like a younger man, but when I started and got the opportunity to be an actor in, in film and television, it was an opportunity that I knew I could never pass up. It was the best opportunity I, I'd ever been given, and I recognised it and worked hard and, and listened, not just about acting, but every department on a film set. I did my time and did like an apprenticeship almost, because if you want to make films, then you should know what everyone does essentially and I think with Sebastian and Amelia I noticed that in them you know they had a great joy about working and to come on set and they were line ready and they were polite and they knew everyone and they wanted to work and we had a great laugh you know we shot in this incredible kelp village that they'd recreated and the sun was shining and there were dogs running around and we had a lovely actings in the sunshine for a summer you know it was great and I didn't recognise her at first but Kate Nash yeah as Boudicca (laughs) It's amazing. Doing the, her rabble-rousing speeches as sort of outdoor festival songs. Yeah. It's a genius. Oh, my God. Casting. Yeah, she was great. I like sitting with Kate Nash and listening to her rap. And she's f- fascinating. She's amazing. Songs are a sort of tradition of horrible histories. But I noticed you didn't partake. Well, In I, fact, your character Argus actually misses it, it the makes big number. Point of, yeah. Is that a uh, conscious decision? Or? Yeah, I got bad knees. I did a film where I learned to be a train to be a dancer and then I did like a martial arts drama for two years in Ireland where I did all my own stunts and action and, and it started to wear me down slightly so my knees aren't dancing knees anymore at this point. So I was like, if I can hide the reason I don't do the songs in my character, we can work with that, right? And they were like, yeah, of course we can. So it was like, and then, you know, we make a point of it and there's a laugh and we get a laugh, you know. So. And, and speaking of song and dance, do you know, this is like a pub quiz question, you know the movie connection between you and I? Oh, uh, no. Um, <laughs> you, you bopped along to a song that I wrote for the character Hi-Hats. Oh, amazing. Attack the Block. Oh, that's great. Yeah. What was the song? I think it was called Get That Snitch. Get That Snitch. <laughs> Get That Strap. Don't give up. Yeah. Yeah. Blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. It's one I'm of, really proud of that. <laughs> you should be proud of it. Uh, I get quoted that quite often. Really? Yeah. Nice. Or people are actually threatening me. That was my first job on a movie ever. Great. Yeah. It was great. Well done. <laughs> now, I heard a rumour 
Uh, this could be completely wrong, so tell me if it is. Okay. That you may be involved in a reimagining of Captain Pugwash. Is that true? And if it is, what can you it, tell me about it? It is and it isn't. I mean, this this came up. I got offered this job about three years ago, and they were 80% financed. The script was pretty good, and then it goes quiet. A lot of these things happen. Mm -hmm. Then it comes back. We're now fully financed. Then it goes away. And I like the script, and I really like Pugwash, and I'd love to do it, but realistically i don't think that chinese money showed up <laughs> and it was far eastern financed okay. and i think realistically me now being in a world where i'm a producer too so i can look at uh, i hate the fact that money's a big draw for people and if a film which has an 80 million pound budget i could never see it ever making its money back i mean pugwash isn't known anywhere really but here i was gonna say you're not a big thing in china also there's <laughs> there's a bunch of people under the age of 30 now who are going what who knows? are these men talking yeah. about i mean i think nuts and bolts for that to make that money back i think it would be kind of impossible so what, what will be the thing we see in next what's next we start shooting there's a show called truth seekers which i'm writing with james serafinovitz and nat saunders and that's about a team of ghost hunters and we're casting that and we start shooting in nine weeks so i'm kind of nervous about it because the scripts are rotten at this point you know we took so much time over them and they were kind of amazing but obviously they're never finished so we're picking them apart and trying to make them as good as we can and now we're kind of casting people we're rewriting things with their voices in mind and by the time we come to shoot everything will be perfect all this bit is meant to be stressful and messed up you know well, i look forward to it people watching it will never know no the process nah. which is great oh, that's the magic yeah. thank you so much thank for the you time. Cheers. cheers man